In 1965, Michael Garrison, the creator of the Wild Wild West, came up with the brilliant idea of combining two of TV's most popular genres, Western and spy adventure, and the Wild Wild West was born. Back in 1954, Garrison, along with a friend of his, had paid $600 to purchase the film rights to Ian Fleming's first Bond book, entitled Casino Royale. Ten years later, Garrison approached CBS with the concept of a Western spy adventure. The phrase Garrison had used was James Bond on horseback. The network liked the idea, and Garrison created the story of two Secret Service agents fighting villains to safeguard the then-president of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. Garrison chose the incredibly handsome Robert Conrad to play James West and Ross Martin to play Artemis Gordon. The Wild Wild West ran for a total of four seasons between 1965 and 69, becoming one of the most watched shows on television. However, in 1969, pressure started to build on networks to reduce violence on the small screen, and thus the show was taken off the air. However, Conrad and Martin reunited in 1979 for their satirical comedy TV movie based on the show, i.e. Wild Wild West Revisited, and in 1980, they came together for more Wild Wild West. Both films did well. In this video, we take you back to an era where James West and Artemis Gordon were the coolest characters on the small screen. Facts First presents 11 Wild Facts About the Wild Wild West. Before we dive in, make sure you take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to allow us to keep you updated about our latest videos. Robert Conrad had an interesting early life. Robert Conrad was actually born Conrad Robert Falk to Leonard Henry Falk, who was 16 years old at the time, and Alice Jacqueline Hartman, who was 15 years old. When Falk was 17, he eloped with a lawyer's daughter. Conrad took a job at the loading docks in Chicago. While there, Falk and his wife lived under the name Mr. and Mrs. Robert Conrad to avoid being caught by their parents, and that's how the actor got his future screen name. Robert Conrad and his wife told their parents about their marriage in May of 1952 when they discovered they were pregnant with their first child. Conrad did all his own stunts. Robert Conrad is responsible for revolutionizing the modern action genre. On the sets of the Wild Wild West, the star would help design each week's action sequence and performed all his own stunts. This created a demand for actors willing to do their own stunts. Though Conrad revolutionized the action genre, performing stunts every week was a risky job that once even landed him in the hospital. While shooting a season 4 episode titled The Night of the Fugitives, Conrad fell from a height of 12 feet and landed on his head. He was immediately rushed to the hospital. It's no wonder Conrad took home a check worth $5,000 every week. When you give so much to a job, you deserve to be well paid. He was multi-talented. Conrad was multi-talented. As a child, he had studied singing, and his vocal coach was Dick Marks, the father of the famous contemporary and pop singer Richard Marks. It was thus no surprise that alongside acting, Conrad also pursued a career in singing. In 1961, he recorded Bye Bye Baby with Warner Brothers Records. The song wasn't a major success and reached only the 113th spot on Billboard. He again tried his luck with singing, but this time in Mexico, where he released an album under the moniker Tom Lopaca, his character's name on the show Hawaiian Eye. In 2008, Robert Conrad started doing a two-hour weekly radio show called The PM Show with Robert Conrad. Didn't we tell you he was multi-talented? Before we move our attention to the other half of this duo, we want to remind you to like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. If Conrad was a master of stunts, Martin was truly the master of disguise. Artemis Gordon, played by Ross Martin, was a master of disguise, and so was Martin in real life. Each week, Martin would work in different disguises and the cast members had no clue what form he would take the next week. While the show was still in production, this talent of Martin stayed relatively hidden. More recently, when the DVD version of the show was released, the collection included a pre-production sketch Martin had created for the show's pilot episode. Other than being a great sketcher, Martin was also a professional violinist. What a talented duo, right? Ross Martin suffered a heart attack while the show was in production. In 1968, Martin suffered a heart attack, forcing him to take a break from filming. In his absence, new actors were introduced to fill up his place, and the audiences saw actors like William Shallert, Charles Aidman, and Alan Hale Jr. try to fill the void left by Martin. 
Such was Martin's influence on the audiences, there was never any mention of replacing the actor permanently. Conrad's height was a problem. Back in the 60s, a hero had to be handsome and tall. While Robert Conrad was one of the most handsome faces on TV, at 5'8", the network considered his height to be a shortcoming. CBS claimed he was 5'10". More importantly, casting agents were given instructions to hire only women who were less than 5'6 in height. Funny, isn't it? Conrad turned down roles he shouldn't have. By the mid-60s, Conrad was an established name. He had already done Hawaiian Eye, playing Detective Tom Lopaka. However, Conrad made the mistake of turning down some roles which could have made him an even bigger star. It's believed he was offered the role of Hannibal on the A-Team, but he turned it down. He was also one of the top choices for playing Captain Tony Nelson on I Dream of Jeannie. However, the role eventually went to Larry Hagman. Well, no one has control over destiny. The show was originally called The Wild West. The show had many producers at different times. The Wild Wild West was Garrison's first show, and thus he often found it difficult to stay within budget. This is the reason the show went through so many different producers, and also why the network decided to move Garrison to another show called Raw Hide. Collier Young replaced him. Young is also the one who added an extra wild to the original title of the show, The Wild West. However, Robert Conrad wasn't very happy with Collier Young. In a documentary about the show, Conrad said he believed the network did the right thing by letting Young go because Young's contribution to the series was limited to the addition of One Extra Wild. Richard Pryor made his on-screen debut with The Wild Wild West. Richard Pryor is one of the most influential stand-up comedians of all time. He won an Emmy, five Grammys, and was the recipient of the first-ever Kennedy Center Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. His first on-screen appearance was on The Wild Wild West. In the first episode of season two of the show, Pryor made his on-screen debut as a creepy ventriloquist, and Ross Martin served as the voice of Julio, his dummy. A decade after going off the air, the show continued with two made-for-TV films. Almost a decade after the show went off the air, Conrad and Martin came together once again for The Wild Wild West Revisited in 1979 and More Wild Wild West in 1980, both satirical comedy made-for-TV films. Since Dunn had passed away in 1973, Paul Williams replaced him as Miguelito Loveless Jr. in both the films. Both the films were written by William Bowers and directed by Burt Kennedy and were well-received, which led to talks of a revival series. Unfortunately, Martin died in 1981, and so did the talks. The 1999 remake version won five Razzies. In 1999, the show was turned into a theatrical film called Wild Wild West, with Will Smith and Kevin Kline taking on the lead roles. Robert Conrad was offered the role of President Grant. However, he declined. Conrad was a critic of the idea since it bore very little resemblance to the original show. The film won the Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Film, Worst Screenplay, Worst Director, Worst Screen Couple, and Worst Original Song. Since Conrad had always been opposed to the film, he more than happily received all the Razzie Awards on behalf of the Wild Wild West team. Much, much later, while promoting Seven Pounds, even Will Smith agreed the film was a terrible mistake. Even after all these years, the Wild Wild West remains a favorite among all those who enjoyed spy shows. Are you one such fan of the show? Did you enjoy these interesting facts? Please share your opinion with us in the comments section. And before you hit play on the next video, like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to help us keep you entertained with new videos every day.